The Muppet Show returns. DC is going global with digital comic books. And the creator of Sonic and Knights wants you to try his new game for free. All that and the latest in everything cool today in The Rundown. Hey, welcome to the show, everybody. This one is dedicated to Mario Mario, who agreed with me on my comments on Scott Pilgrim yesterday. But you know what? It's time to start the music. It's time to light the lights. Oh, this one just makes me feel so good. The Muppet Show is coming back, and Disney Plus is going to start streaming all five of the original seasons. And seasons four and five have actually never been available on home video. This was an incredible show when it premiered way back in 1976. It was a primetime variety show that had all kinds of celebrity guests, all of the hottest names back in the 70s, and I think it ran right into the 80s. But what was crazy for me is that this show coincided with the launch of Star Wars, and Star Wars was featured on The Muppet Show more than once, and it always was incredible to see C-3PO and R2-D2 and Luke Skywalker next to Kermit the Frog and Fozzie Bear and Miss Piggy and all of these crazy Jim Henson creations. It was so funny and so silly and goofy, uh, but there was just this heartwarming glow around The Muppet Show. It just seemed impossible that it, it really existed. And of course, Disney owns The Muppets. They have for several years, and they've done a variety of different projects over the years. There actually is another Muppet show on Disney Plus, which I haven't seen. I haven't heard it's that great. But the Muppet show is the classic, and it always was a total joy to watch. So that starts February 19th. And if you've never seen the Jason Siegel Muppets movie, The Muppets, because uh, there was also a whole string of original Muppet movies that ran as well, which are pretty darn good. Uh, but The Muppets starring Jason Siegel is still one of my favorite Muppet inventions so far. And, you know, when I saw that Jason Siegel movie, which was a total homage to the classic Muppet Show era, I got really crazy emotional. Yeah, I've said Muppet a lot in this piece. But can you tell? I'm super excited that The Muppet Show is coming back. That is a great get, Disney+, Plus, and I can't wait to watch some of those classic episodes. I hope that the nostalgic glow that I'm feeling right now is justified in the end product when I see these shows again. I hope it's not rose-colored glasses that I've gone on. Uh, but I, honestly, I just love that series. So I can't wait to dive back in. And uh, that was great news to wake up to. Thank you, Disney Plus, for that one. Now we've got some more good news, especially for fans of Sonic the Hedgehog and Knights. In the dystopian hellscape that was the year 2020, the trailer for Balan Wonderworld was a very incongruous and welcome sight. This is a cartoony action adventure platformy style game made uh, by some of the creators of Sonic the Hedgehog, directed by Yuji Naka, the man that created Sonic the Hedgehog. And it looks very light, it looks very ethereal and magical. It's all about this enchanted theater, which is headed up by this maestro named Balan. And the characters in the game actually go on these different adventures by putting on all of these different types of costumes. And there's an interweave between some of the stuff that's in the real world and some of the stuff that's in these magical fantasy worlds. And it looks very out of time and a little bit different from a lot of the, the muted color palettes and the darker, heavier stuff that we play in tons of games these days. And I think that is the great magic of this game. And I really hope that it is a blast to play. We're going to get a demo, which is about two hours worth of content on January 28th. And it's going to give us slices of different levels and uh, different game worlds which is pretty cool. There's going to be a farm type level that we're going to be able to cruise around in. One of them is going to be focused on the wind and one of them is going to have a cute little kitten. And you guys know how much I'm digging the cats in the video games these days, which is super cool. I can't wait to jump into this game. I hope that it is a nice flight of fancy. I hope that uh, this is one that I can enjoy with my kid. Uh, but more than anything, I just hope that the controls are tuned and you just feel that one-to-one -one connection with the characters and switching up the costumes is going to be fun. And there will be lots of nice little treats and rewards throughout the game. So I'm, I'm definitely going to download the demo and give it a shot next week. And uh, the game, the full game, comes out March 26th. So my fingers are crossed for Balan Wonderworld. Now, DC Comics is going back into the digital space with an aggressive strategy to bring on new comic readers from around the world. 
DC Comics is launching DC Universe Infinite, which is trying to bring in as many of the iconic brands and characters as they possibly can. DC's promising 25,000 books. It's going to launch next week, January 21st in the U.S., but then they're promising it's going to hit lots of other territories around the world. I'm a massive fan of Marvel Unlimited. That's their comic app where you can download and read 25,000 or 50,000 comic books. On Trust me, I haven't read them all yet, uh, but I love that I could just dive into different series in the Marvel verse anytime that I want to. So I am very much looking forward to the DC equivalent. There's tons of DC books that I just haven't had time to find, but I'm definitely more in tune with being able to download and, and peruse comics on my iPad than I am in physical form. I still buy physical comics from time to time, but I read way more stuff on my iPad. So I am very fired up about this. I'm also fired up that DC is putting a big emphasis on Vertigo books, on Milestone comics as well. And so they're not just going for Batman, Superman, Wonder Woman. They're trying to get the whole breadth, the whole scope of what DC has published over the years. And they've got some fantastic books. You know, I I don't know what the monthly cost is going to be just yet. Presumably, it's going to be something akin to what Marvel Unlimited costs, and I think I pay about 90 bucks a year. And I'll tell you something, that Marvel Unlimited subscription gets used a lot. I read a ton of classic Marvel stuff. There's Star Wars stuff. Uh, I've been digging into Miles Morales. I've been loving The Immortal Hulk by Al Ewing, so I can't wait to subscribe to this DC Universe Infinite app. Now, DC Comics is also promising some digital comics first and some early access to some content, which is pretty cool. They're enhancing their comics reader and there's going to be all kinds of different ways that you can serve up your content as well and that's what they're saying is their first step so they're launching with a pretty robust app with lots of different titles and lots of ways for you to access this content but they say more is on the way uh, and I guess they're backing away from putting all of the television programming and animated work into this app this is strictly just for the comics universe because of course HBO Max is diving deeper into the DC universe uh, so it, it is a little bit confusing but this is something that I've been asking DC Comics to do for a long time, mostly because I'm such a huge fan of Marvel Unlimited. All right, I've got one more piece of wonderful news for you, and that is The Kingdoms of Amalur Re-Reckoning is coming to the Nintendo Switch on March 16th, and they've released a, uh, a little teaser trailer on this. This is a heavily underappreciated action role-playing experience. It was made by Big Huge Games and 38 Studios back in 2012 for the Xbox 360, PlayStation 3, and and it ran very well on those machines, and it was just so ambitious. But, you know, it was fraught with issues and problems, and of course the, the whole 38 Studios debacle kind of stayed with that game. But the game, I think, was kind of a cult classic when it came out, and THQ Nordic has done a great job at snapping up the rights to all kinds of cool titles, and Kingdoms of Amalur is one of them. They released the re-reckoning version of Kingdoms of Amalur last year on a bunch of platforms. I checked it out on the PC and thought it was great. Uh, but I think the Switch is actually a really, really nice fit for it. It's going to be a massive game with lots and lots of areas to explore, lots of uh, interesting creatures and characters to encounter. Of course, there's this whole loot mechanic in there that's really addictive as well. I've always enjoyed that game, so I can't wait to check this thing out again on the Nintendo Switch. All right, you guys, that's going to do it for our rundown today. Thank you all so much for watching. Thank you to all of our subscribers out there. Thank you to all of our EPN members. Thank you for just joining up if you just have. We'll see you tomorrow with a brand new rundown. And until then, play forever.